Excellent, excellent. How's our boy? He's doing great, like always. Awesome. Hi, Eric. He's saying, hey, Mama. I love you. I love you, too. I can't wait till you come over, Emma. It's going to be so fun, but it's going to be hot. Bring a swimming suit. Okay, I will. Okay. You, I don't know if you want to see this in a bathing suit, but I'll take I'll it. I'll show you mine if you show you yours. Mine's pretty That's bad. Mine's Eric is saying he's having five kids. Excited. He's super excited that I'm coming over because he wants to give you lots of Eric hugs. So Aww. he's crawling into me and then he'll be hugging you. Oh my okay. God, that's awesome. Uh-oh, <laughs> baby alert. Hey, you have my backup drive, Easton. Hey, come get your baby, Michelle. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I thought we would go ahead and um, uh, try to bring in King Henry VIII. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like an interesting character. A big personality, I bet. Uh-oh, he wants Mimi. Uh, it looks like Eric kind of adjusted to his attire. <laughs> oh, really? What, is he dressing? Into, yeah, he's kind of dressed into kind of, uh, he's, he's wearing like leggings and he's wearing like a, I don't know, it kind of looks like a short pin, somehow poofy. It's just funny, and he's wearing this hat that he's got crooked. <laughs> I don't think he's wearing it right, because it kind of looks like he's trying to be cool with it. So oh, it looks no. Like you are better. cool with it, Eric. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> it's funny. But he brought him with him, so they're kind of standing next to each other. Okay, hey, before, uh -huh. we, before I interview you, King Henry VIII, I want to ask Eric something. Two okay. people... Uh, on a YouTube channels who usually channel you uh, are so into this whole thing where you are really a dark spirit because you're suicide and they're trying to heal you and you have a big dark side. What's that all about? Because you got healed. He's saying, well, it's just about, you know, it's their own insecurities and their own fears that just come out. So um, are they connecting to me? Yes, I am there with them and I'm there to them. But uh, the message is they're being distorted. He's saying it's being distorted by their own, um, their own negativity, their own uh, ideas about um, good and bad. Um, so... He's saying, you know, the only thing we can do with, when it comes to people like that is to, to just really send them love and understanding. Yeah. Um, it's the only reason that we're going to guide them into the light. And, you know. Because I, I, just, I just don't think you would be able to do so much good for so many people if you were a dark or even just had a dark side. No, he's saying, you know, absolutely not. He's just saying, you know, you have to understand that when it comes to um people when we're in our human form the information that comes in can be distorted it can be twisted around and it can be manipulated by our own state of mind by our own thoughts don't forget he says you know we create our own reality our consciousness creates how we perceive the world how we perceive messages that come in and so there are people out there who you know believe that they're talking to an angel but this angel is telling them for instance oh that they need to hurt people or that you know other people will get ill if they do this and that you know whenever messages he says of um negativity messages of uh, fear uh, fear-based messages come out, then you really have to stop for a minute and say, wait a minute, spirits are unconditional, uh, loving uh, entities who uh, have compassion and respect for everyone, um, everyone's choices, everyone's thoughts, and everyone's free will. So messages from the other side will never be harmful to another person. They will always be supportive, loving, and caring. So, okay. Um, all right, that's all I wanted, basically. I, I don't want to take too much time away from uh, King Henry. He probably is not used to waiting on people. Are you, King Henry? 
He's saying, well, not in that lifetime, but I am okay now. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. And thank you for coming. I'd like to ask you some questions, if I may. And thank you, Eric, for bringing in. Uh, what was your childhood like? Just real briefly. I've got a lot of questions, so I just kind of want the, the brief answer on these, if you can. And what was the question? What was your childhood like? Well, he's saying, you know, I can't complain. It was not a bad childhood. Um, I was pampered. I was loved. Um, I had, um, let's just say, an upbringing that most people would dream about. Oh, yeah. Uh, because, you know, everybody would uh, uh, was in service of me and my family. Um, and um, he's saying my family loved me dearly. Um, he's saying, you know, the only maybe, um, you know, the bad thing was that I did lose uh, my parents um, and I did lose. Um, he's making me feel like he did lose a, a sibling or siblings. Um, very what happened? Early did they die of natural causes or disease or were they beheaded or? He says, no, they died of illness. They died. Um, he's mm. making me feel like his older, this is an older brother um, who, it, he, he was very young when he passed away. He was supposed to be king, he says. He's oh. showing with a crown on his head so he's saying he's he was um supposed to be king and he's making me feel like he just he died of some illness um okay. it's okay we don't have to get specific it's being passed over he says that it was passed on it's it's almost like his father actually brought this illness into the house mm. and it was passed on uh, to certain people, and he's making me feel like his brother died first, and then his father died of the same disease. Um, it kind of looks to me like um, they're like coughing up blood because it, it kind of looks to me like TB or something like that, or pneumonia. Okay, well, we'll uh, go. I'll go on like to the next one. Infectious, and it was spread, and so he did lose his father, he did lose his brother. Um, and he's saying, you know, all of a sudden, <laughs> I was raised having fun. And all of a sudden, um, I was supposed to be king. <laughs> mm. So he's kind of making me feel like he did get thrown into that responsibility. Um, he did get guidance straight away as soon as his brother passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, he did get um, a lot of guidance and teachings. He had to learn a lot of things at a very quick pace. I bet. Um, and he actually, he says, you know, I can't complain. It was not a bad life. All right. Well, did, did, did you really believe you married, you had an arranged marriage with Catherine of Aragon. Did you really believe it was proper to have your marriage uh, annulled? Or was it just because you wanted to marry Anne Boleyn? I mean, did you truly have legal cause? Well, he says, my relationships were always very complicated, but if there's one thing that I can tell you, um, when it comes to Catherine, I did love her very much. Um, she was the wife of my brother who had passed away, um, which um, oh. later on kind of made me think um, was, not a good thing um because he's saying you know I, I after my brother passed um you know we would comfort each other yeah there there was a, a more a sense of um brother and sister mm. um but i had a lot of respect for her i had a lot of love towards her was i in love you know it depends on how you look at it. Did I love her? Yes. Was I in love like, you know, butterflies in the stomach? No. Um, it was more an arranged um, marriage, but I did care for her very much. Um, and so after a while, you know, she did try to conceive and it was very, very, very important that um, I, I needed an heir. I needed somebody to follow me on because you have to keep in mind he says that before um my father you know my father came into 
uh, the kingdom came, you know, became king after a lot of long uh, civil wars. There was a lot of battles. He's showing me a lot of wars, a lot of battles. And so um, he kind of united um, the kingdom. And, and so they needed to continue that because they knew that there were still people trying to, you know, um, split up the country, trying to uh, gain power. So it was extremely important, he says, that I got an heir, that sure. I got a male child. And unfortunately, um, with Catherine, we did not have a lot of luck. We had a lot of stillborns. We had a lot of babies die at an early age. Um, and she, <laughs> he's saying, unfortunately, by the time she was about two, you know, you're, you're, and still there's no male heir, you're starting to get worried. And um, I have to say, I did have, um, mistresses oh yeah oh yeah um, that was very common in those days it was not considered done according to the church according to catholicism uh, but it was just common everybody knew that um that during um he's saying don't forget women got pregnant over and over and over again and it was uh, considered that when a woman was a woman was pregnant, we did not have sexual intercourse with that woman. She needed to rest. She needed to be right. separated from us, and so it was very acceptable that we would kind of uh, find enjoyment somewhere else. So that was okay. So just um, to just to wrap it up, I don't want to get too far into these questions. I hate to cut you off because you're King Henry, of course, but I we got so many. Questions, but uh, so did you feel like you it was proper to annul your marriage with Catherine? It was not done. I was extremely religious. I believed that uh, God um, wanted me in this as king. I believed that uh, my family was supposed was um, sent here uh, with the grace of God. Um, so I was extremely religious, and so um, as she became forty. I knew that having an heir was probably not going to happen anymore. So um, with the influence of other people, they convinced me to get a new wife and to get my marriage annulled. So mm -hmm. I requested, um, you know, the cancellation of the marriage, he says, okay. but they, uh, they refused it. So I had no other choice than to, um, in a way, create my own religion, create my own church. Uh -huh, that's my next question. Where Did, I could cancel that marriage, he says. Uh -huh. um, that was my next question. Did you start the English the Reformation? Time. Did you start the English Reformation only because you were mad at uh, uh, the Pope for denying the annulment? Because you you were in love with Anne Boleyn, you really wanted to marry her. I was very much infatuated with her, he says. It was more than love. I was completely drowned into her presence, he mm. says. Um, she also did not want to marry me unless, or she did not want to share my bed, he says, unless she was married. That's Although true. Although we did a lot of other things. <laughs> yeah. So she kept my interest going very clearly. Um, there are other ways um, to enjoy each other, he says, which we did. Uh, but when it came to the final act, she was not going to get pregnant without a mayor, you know, without uh, being queen. So, um, under her influence uh, and under the fact that, you know, uh, the church wouldn't allow it. Yeah. Um, she convinced me that, hey, there are other ways. She had a different view of religion. She had a different view um, uh, of what she considered, uh, you know, should be religion. And so what I did was she convinced me to, to basically make my own church with bits and pieces of both um, both angles and view of, of uh, religion and my view of religion. And we basically chose the ones that we liked, put them together. Um, and that's what reformed uh, religion in England, he says. Mm -hmm. um, was it because I, I lost my faith, because I lost my trust in the Pope? No, it was because I needed to get a divorce and I wanted Anne to be my wife. She convinced me to do this. That's so. So, this is so accurate, uh, you know, according to, I mean, the reason I wanted to talk to you, Henry, 
is because, or King Henry, sorry, is because I've been watching the Netflix Rain, R E I G N, and it's about your life and all that. And it's just, this is just so amazingly accurate. It's amazing. Okay, you started the Church of England. So did you eventually consider yourself a Protestant or were you still a true Catholic? He says, on my heart, I think I always say to Catholic. Um, but with time, over time, you know, you, let's just say that I started to feel more like God than I did as, a, uh, uh, you know, below God. Um, so he's going, in my heart, I also had a lot of fear that I would be punished for um, not being faithful to the Catholic Church, not being faithful to the Pope. Um, and he's saying, with time, that actually grew more and more inside of me. Um, I started to, if you look, and he's saying, you know, you. Anybody who would go through my life like I did, you know, you would probably think the same. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Over time, I really felt that I was, uh, because I, um, I indulged and, you know, I, I went against the church and I did this and I did that. I, I, I was becoming punished by God. Um, and, and for, until the day that I died, I really... Uh, did believe that um, I was fallen out of grace of God. So um, I was very afraid of did, dying. Do you think that's why, uh, do you feel like, you know, you had other wives after Anne, and they all, everybody just had miscarriages, stillbirths, miscarriages, stillbirths. And do you think that God, did you feel at the time that God was punishing you that way? Well, he says, with Catherine, with my first wife, I really believe that the miscarriages was a, a punishment of God because I married uh, the wife of my brother, oh, okay. which in those days was not really done uh, according to church. Yeah, brothers uh, before hoes, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but he's saying over time, um, I really became obsessed when it comes to medicine um, because um, I had several illnesses that I uh, overcame because I, I was a very strong person. You know, I was very strong, very athletic. I was um, very healthy um, and had an extreme strong immune system. And I did overcome a lot of illnesses. Um, but I think that um, I started to believe that um, it wasn't just a punishment of God, but it also had to do with um, all these, um, I, I would consider them demons, the, the diseases that were inside oh, of yeah. me. Yeah, I, I would consider them as demons mm. that they were continuously being passed on to the babies, you know? Oh. So I think that the problem was me. I didn't believe that it was the women um, because we always made sure that we uh, picked very fertile women, very... Um, in those days, you know, the way a, women, a woman looked meant that she was healthy and she was um, good for giving birth, giving birth et cetera, et cetera. So um, we always made sure that the women that I picked were extremely healthy and, and um, fertile. And well nourished. Like yeah, you know, they think that uh, you had something called McLeod's syndrome and that you were positive for the Kell antibody. And that caused all these miscarriages and stillbirths. Is that true? I know you're not a doctor, but you can ask a, a spirit doctor. Come here, come here, come here. He's saying, well, let me explain it this way. He's saying no. Um, he's saying that what he had was... Um, He's saying at the age of 30, I actually suffered from mal malaria. Oh, okay. Um, and malaria is, um, nowadays you see it more in the hotter areas in the um, tropics. But he's saying in, in our days, uh, malaria was all over. Wow. Um, and he's saying uh, what I did was I overcame the disease. 
Uh, however, um, the disease never fully left my body. And so what I did have, I had chronic outbursts of malaria, fever um, on a regular basis my whole life. That never stopped. So um, as of the age of 30, um, I uh, continuously had that uh, virus inside of my system. Uh, and so he's, he's making me feel like, according to him, he passed that on to the babies. Oh, okay. Wow. That's not... Good. Uh, yeah. All right. So, uh, well, okay. So, describe Anne's personality. It just like give me three adjectives to describe her. Anne Boleyn, we're talking about. He's saying exciting, different, and extremely sexual. Did, do you think she really loved you, or did she just want to be queen? I mean, now, now, in the place you are right now. Um, I, looking at it now, she was more infatuated with being queen than she was with me. However, um, she was an extremely good actress, he says. She knew exactly how to make men crazy. Um, but she also had a, almost like a deep sense of grief inside of her. Um, and that made her feel vulnerable. That made her feel, um, in my mind, that made her feel, I was drawn to that, that she was very strong. She was very confident. But when you looked into her eyes, you could see that deep inside of her was just a little girl wanting to have attention, wanting to be loved, uh, and wanted to be respected. Because he's making me feel like um, in her life, um, it was all about pretending. It was all about trying to get to the next level, trying yes. to get high up, um, being taken care of, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how her family was. Yeah. Uh, she was never True. allowed to be who she really wanted to be, but she was, <laughs> she, she was daring. You know, most women in those days, you know, they would be, um, uh, what I would consider, you know, followers. They would just follow what you do. You're submissive, yeah. Look down, you know. Um, she was not like that. She had an opinion of her own. Um, and she had, um, she was daring. She didn't really care what other people thought. Um, and um, that was very refreshing for me. I was not used to well, that. Not, not used to somebody. I know. Um, telling me what standing, to do. Yeah, standing up to you. Well, uh, she knew she had you by the cojones, probably. So, hey, so what did you feel when you had and beheaded? I actually felt really sad. Um, people had convinced me of certain things. Um, in my in my eyes, they brought uh, you know undisputable evidence. Um, I now know that um, it was actually manufactured. It was a you know what she was uh, accused of I didn't really happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in those days, it wasn't just the fact that um, you know the accusations that they would. Um, that they would show me, but it was also the fact that um, over time I loved her, you know, her feistiness and I loved her outspoken opinions and all of that. But with time, um, she actually became to a point or she came to a point where she started to tell me what to do, where she would take control of my decision making. And that is something that went too far for me. That went too far. Um, and so, the annoyance of that and the fact that she would um, question my decision making in my kingdom um, started, it's almost like it started kind of like a distance. It created a distance. Like he started to go further and further away from her. Well, yeah, um, because you didn't you truly believe the supreme divine rights, right of kings that you answer only to God? So that must have been hard. You believed that, right? Yes, and I also believe that women should be dismissive. 
Well, why do you think it was so important to have a male heir when female heirs really, and you saw how strong Anne was, female heirs can rule just as well. I mean, or, or did you not believe that? Because in in my years, um, males were considered rulers and not females. Yeah. Well, what do you think now? Well, I believe that anybody could be a good leader. <laughs> what do you think about women now? Well, it says from my from my um, spiritual perspective, I understand that we are all equals, and that. Um, um, Women are, um, he's going, how should I say this <laughs> without offending anybody? Um, you don't want to offend us, it's okay. Women are led with their hearts. Mm -hmm. They are more led with their feelings, their intuition. And therefore, um, I feel that at this time, um, they are actually better leaders than men are because men are more led with ego. Um, not all men, he says, no. but most of men are led with um, still the idea of being in power um, and of ego. Um, and if you look at my story, and um, I was an extremely ego driven person, um, and you. <laughs> My outcome is very clear to what happens if you solely live your life based on ego, yeah. on being vain, on, uh, <laughs> boy, did I do it all, he says. <laughs> I know. I mean, you were pretty vain, so it must have been really hard uh, for you because you became just totally obese and physically, um, I was going to say grotesque, but that'd be rude, physically not unattractive. That must have been very difficult for you. He says, let's just say that the last years of my life were hell. Mm. You have to understand, he says, you know, I was always very um, obsessed by the way that I looked. By I being, know. You were a good looking by, guy. Yeah. You know, being seen as athletic and a, a leader and a ruler, uh, although I kept myself more busy with having fun than I did with leading the country. But, you know, um, he's saying, you know, my image was extremely important. And he's saying, you know, the obesity really didn't come out of free will. <laughs> he's saying it was um, a lot of injuries that kind of led up to it. And he's, he's, he's making me feel like um, he, he changed as a person. He became a person that he really didn't want to be, but he's making me feel like he had no choice. Um, he's saying that he had uh, a few injuries um, that he sustained uh, during his lifetime that caused him... Um, to be less active? Well, now he's, he's showing me his, his brain. Oh, gosh, that's interesting. You should bring that out. Yeah, that's the, up. Yeah. Uh, so he's saying that you know. Oh my um, God, that is so interesting because I forgot about this question. Some say your obesity was a result of growth hormone deficiency after you suffered a jousting injury to the brain. Is that it? He says it's a combination of. So he's saying first of all, you need to understand that. Um, I was very proud of the way that I looked, and so I would wear pretty tight clothing, is what he's saying. And he's saying, you know, what that did was that caused uh, ulcers in the bottom of my legs. Oh. Uh, and that was because there was no um, good blood flow. Yeah. Um, it would come in, but it wouldn't be able to go back to the heart. It, the, the, the blood flow was restricted. He's showing me kind of like his calf, and he's showing me how they would put like elastic bands oh, around gosh, it. Oh, gosh, how awful off his legs um, and he's saying because of that bad circulation he already had ulcers inside his his um, his calf um, and he's saying that um, at one point he got a blow to the head he's showing me right above the eye yeah right right sticks. right exactly I don't know what it's called um, you know where they go jousting yeah jousting yeah, stick yeah. there you go jousting sticks um, and it looks like it went 
for some reason he it looks like he didn't close his visor or he exactly forgot he forgot visor. to close it that's right he's showing me a, a blow right above the eye he's saying what that did was it caused um an inflammation in the frontal lobe of the brain is what he's showing okay like trauma to yeah. the to brain mm -hmm. um and he's saying over time you know it did get better but then um he had his final severe extremely severe accident is what he's showing me again same thing the jousting thing um it looks like he was hit and he fell but his foot got stuck in the stirrup and the horse Ooh. fell on top of him oh. now he's saying you have to imagine i was in armor which was if if it wasn't for that i would have been killed instantly but the horse was also in armor oh, so that yeah. is a lot of weight that fell upon me and it it caused the brain to, to you know, it caused the, the brain damage to uh, expand. Oh, gosh. That, the pressure of the horse um, created ruptures in my legs, in my groin area. Oh. Um, and the ulcers that were there that had been closed had been exploded. It's oh. like it went completely open. Oh, by the um, way, it was not rain, the Netflix. That's uh, Mary Queen and Scott. So we're watching, also watching... The Tudors. That is the Netflix series I'm. I was thinking about. I'm I need like, to watch that because oh, it's awesome. It's really awesome. Know, those uh, historical shows. My my husband's very much into into action and. <laughs> oh yeah, right, right. And all right, so, and all of that. So here's uh, just, I need to watch that. But yeah, apparently all of that. Um, they actually thought he wasn't going to survive. He said, "You know, I just woke up, and apparently it was so many hours later." Um, and he was in extreme pain, extreme pain. Um, ever since that, I had constant uh, headaches, migraines. Mm. Um, my legs got worse and worse um, due to maltreatment, due to, um, let's just say that medicine wasn't all that great in those days. Um, and, you know, he... <laughs> Then they actually made it worse. <laughs> oh, great. Whoopsie. He well, actually made it worse. And did you die from this? Did you die from this? No, no, I didn't die from this. Um, but he's saying, picture this. Picture your brain hurting all the time, mm -hmm. migraines, headaches. Picture your legs, open sores, um, ulcers. Um, excruciating pain. They would mm. cut the ulcers open oh every day. Let all that pull it out. They the treatments were horrible. So not only did the injury to the to my front lobe create mood swings. It creates it. it, it it's almost like it caused a disturbance, like a, like a, um. Oh, I can't find the word, but like, um, you know, like there were, um, like outbursts, like one minute, he okay. was fine, next minute, boom. It, it's almost like his mood swings, um, that he already had naturally. He said, I did have those naturally, but they would become worse. so much worse and they would become very unpredictable. Um, and the fact that I was in constant pain made me very disgruntled. It made of me course. angry. It well, let made me. me let me cut um, you. Let me cut you off at the past because I'm. I don't. I really want to finish this within the hour. Uh, just yes or no. Did you have syphilis? Yes. Gout. What? Gout. He's saying no. <laughs> Scurvy. Body no. deficiency. What did you die from then? Um, I died from type two diabetes. Oh, okay. For obesity. All right. Well, that made your ulcers worse, I'm sure. Well, okay. Give me three of the most, of your most important contributions to England slash the world. Hey. <laughs> He's calling me. <laughs> okay. Well, he's saying, you know, I, I, I would like to believe that I had uh, a part in keeping the country as one and keeping it together. Mm 
<laughs> he's talking about um, changing it from a Catholic country to more Protestant country. So uh, I think he's he's still proud of the fact that he kind of adjusted religion. Um, Broke up the papacy. The very very you I think he brought attention to the corrupt papacy and, and clergy. They were just taking people's lands and taking all the gold and just doing all sorts of stuff. Well, he's saying, you know, I did. Um, he's making me feel like, although he did, he did horrible things because he's making me feel like he would uh, anybody who would try and disrupt the unity or who would try and divide the kingdom, he would get rid of. Them. It's just like have a lot of people you're out, off. Out, you're out. Uh, so in a way you think this in a way I contributed to the unity of the country I contributed to um, trying to keep it together um, and trying to make a more unified country but he says on the other hand you know I did do extremely terrible things and he's saying when I did when I got my life's review the pain that I caused oh gosh the thousands of people, family members that lost their, you know, their husbands and their fathers, the pain that I endured during my life's review, um, you know, was a hundred times worse than the physical pain I endured as wow. my life. So uh, that was an extremely eye opener. Um, I did have to go through therapy when it came to uh, horrible things that I did. Uh, I now understand that everything had a purpose and a reason, but still to this day, um, it's still hard for me to think that I went away from source um, that far. Um, I came into this world thinking that I was guided by God, that, that I, I was, um, Oops. that my actions were um, approved to the world, um, knowing that I had failed God, um, that I had done terrible things, um, and I died miserable, in pain, and alone, he says. So that was the outcome of living an ego-based life, yeah. you know, vanity, um, okay. Well, all these that he says. You married a lot of people, of course. Everybody knows that. Which of all your wives did you truly love the most? That would be Catherine. Catherine of Aragon. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, I'm going to ask you uh, close up by asking some spiritual questions. What was your spiritual mission this lifetime? Well, for me, it was all about understanding that greed and ego just leads to a suffering and destruction of oneself. It was all about understanding that, um, let's just say it was about experiencing the lower density. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was about being completely cut off from source and, and experiencing the outcome of, of that. Okay. Um, that's what I was here to learn personally. And let me tell you, they're not easy lessons to learn. Oh, you know, what I was here to teach while well, he's saying it's, it's exactly, I showed you what not to do, how not to rule, how um, one person um, can destroy a lot of people. Uh, I did try my best, but <laughs> he's saying, I also destroyed uh, the economy of England. <laughs> I made it bankrupt. Really? And, uh, Why? Is it because yeah. your own lavish spending or was worse? Overspending. Or? Overspending. Oh, gosh. Um, my paranoia with illness. I was paranoid with disease because of my my brother and my dad dying of it and me getting frequent illnesses. I was also paranoid about disease. So I do believe that maybe in that aspect, um, I really – put a lot of money into medicine. So I'm hoping that, um, and I know he says that I actually gave medicine a little bit of a push to go uh, outside of them, uh, their uh, regular knowledge and to look for other solutions and to look all over the world. For oh. I think I did provide that for the world. Um, 
he has some crazy medicine he says oh <laughs> i bet so leeches and stuff medicine. um yeah and he's talking about oh, yeah. he used to put um he used to make his own ointments to put on his ulcer hey can you but get Bella out of had, here like, they sorry, had, like, sorry somebody food. came to the door so the dogs are going crazy uh, all right sorry okay. about that sorry people it's I, life it's life in the medhus family the Madhouse family. The busy house. Eric goes busy, busy, busy. Mm -hmm. Eric goes. You know, Mom, those those cures were just really fucked up. He's saying, you know, they would they like leak, put leeches all over them, and they would um, cut completely do the opposite of what we do now. They would mm -hmm. actually introduce more infection into the wounds because they thought that they needed to leave them open. They needed to drain them. Ah. You know, they would. He's saying, think about it, Mom. He had ulcers, and as soon as they started to heal, they would break cut them him open. Down. Oh, Jesus. Can you imagine the torture? And not that good happened. when you have diabetes. Not good. Exactly. What is your biggest, re what is your biggest regret, King Henry? Do I have to say King Henry VIII? I'll just call you King Henry. My biggest regret. <laughs> He says, my biggest regret was thinking that I was God. Okay. Wow. Uh, your biggest insight when you transitioned, I guess it was that you realized how much pain you had caused, but I don't know. I don't want to speak for you. Yeah. He says, the suffering, the suffering that I caused. Um, I, I had regrets before I died, but I didn't know that the suffering went to that extent. I didn't think... He says, I bet you were glad, relieved, enormous, enormously relieved that you didn't end up in hell. Was that an insight you had? Oh my God, thank God. He says, yes, I was glad that there was no hell. <laughs> I had my doubts there for a minute, but I still stayed true to God. And, um, I did have a priest with me at all times, so I knew that he was going to kind of get me into heaven uh, in some way or form. So I, I was afraid, though, that I would go to a really dark place. Uh, but I have to say that I was uh, happy to see that I came into a very accepted place um, who was judging me. And I had to deal with my own judgment. I judged myself for a very long time. Yeah. Um, and he's saying, yeah, that's, you know, if, if you look at my other lives, they, um, that, that life had such an impact on all my other lives. My other lives were a lot, a lot more simple, a lot more, um, good, he says, although there was suffering, um, but, um, it was suffering for a good purpose. It was suffering okay. for a good purpose, so. Were you, are you with Catherine and all your other wives, Anne Boleyn, all that, getting along okay? We see each other on time to time. We're not constantly together, he says, but we have made uh, our peace with one another, yes. Who are you with the most over there of anybody in your life, even acquaintances? He says my mother. Oh, okay. My mother is my soulmate. Wow. Can you share a life, future, past, that most influenced your one is King Henry VIII? Well, he says this is a life that, um, that came after Henry. Um, I was, he showed me a young man, um, very handsome. Um, Okay, so it looks like he came into a life of um, wealth. So he, he had a, a comfortable upbringing. Um, but it looks like they lost everything in uh, the Great Depression. Oh. So he went from being um, pretty wealthy to being completely broke. Where was this? Um, Is it, was it in the States? This is in the States. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he's showing me how um, his family separated. It was almost like um, 
nobody got along after that. It's mm -hmm. like nobody, uh, ha everybody had a different view of trying to survive. Yeah. Uh, he says he was about 17 when it happened. Um, and he became, <laughs> he's saying, I actually, uh, I thought I was happy being wealthy, but I actually found my happiness in poverty. Mm. He's saying, I became a person that would, um, I would go from place to place. It's almost like he would jump on trains. Oh. He would jump on trains and, draw, and ride along with them to the next town and the next town trying to find a way to survive. But he's making me feel like in that poverty, in that uh, feeling of just trying to get through one day at a time, he found peace. He found um, a simplicity that brought uh, harmony within himself. He didn't need to impress anybody anymore. He didn't need to uh, think about how am I going to keep the business going and, and taking up responsibilities. I was free. I could go and sleep and eat wherever I wanted to. I had the whole world at my feet, you know. Um, and although I didn't have much and I would really try to just survive one day at a time, there was this freedom in it. There was this freedom. And he says, over time, when I was about 25, wandering around, I did found a wonderful girl who oh, I made and I loved dearly. And throughout our life, we were just okay. We never excelled. We never had um, a, a great deal of money and success, but that was fine by us. We just wanted to be with one another and start a family. And um, it was the simplicity. It sounds like a very sweet life. It really does. Are you currently on the uh, uh, earthly plane right now? In incarnated? This is not in this time frame, no. Okay. Can you share anything new about you that nobody else in, in the world knows about? Eric is going, tell him, tell him, tell him. Come <laughs> on. I dare you. He's like poking him with his elbow. Oh. He's going, okay. So he said, <laughs> he's saying, this is actually a question from your son. He says, um, he's talking about uh, how Eric was like, yeah, every time you see a movie about you and every time you see a show, you're like this great sexual partner and you know all the ins and outs about women. Was it really like that? <laughs> he's saying, well. <laughs> I don't want to disappoint you ladies, but I was really not great in bed. Oh, my uh, God. Anne taught me a lot. Let's just say it that way. Anne taught me a lot. Um, but I was not the greatest lover. I just wasn't. I was very clumsy with it. Um, it's pretty much wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. It was. It was more like, hey, I'm in charge. You shut up. And... <laughs> And I'll do my thing. Uh, and then I would leave. I would actually not stay with the person. We would not sleep together. And that's another misconception, he says, in a lot of movies that they sleep. No, no, no. We all had our separate bedrooms. The deed was done. We all go our separate oh, ways. God. See ya. Wouldn't um, want to be ya. Okay. So, yeah, unfortunately, I wasn't the greatest lover. Um, that's but okay. That's what he says. That's okay. Yeah. I tried my <laughs> You probably made up for it in the simple life that you led. He says, yeah, I did. I made I made up for it. She was a pleased woman, and, and we were happy. So oh, um, I did experience happiness, and I did experience that's good. Uh, love and compassion. So, uh, Do you have any messages for the world? He's saying, yeah. Or advice, message, you know. He said, I want to say this to all the leaders out there at this moment. Oh, God. A lot of <laughs> ego going on out there. Here it comes. I don't know what that word means, though. Okay, so this is the word that I'm hearing, besiege. Okay. Does that mean anything to you? Yeah. Do you know? Okay. As long as you know. <laughs> I'll just repeat what he says. Um he says, beseech the truth of your actions before you take them. Okay. He says, listen to your heart and ask source for guidance. He says, do not listen to others. Why listen to others 
when you can listen to the source. Yeah. Do not listen to ego. He says, do not listen to ego, but follow your heart. As your intuitive self knows your place and purpose in this world, follow your heart and all will be well, he said. Awesome. So what do you okay. think about our current political leaders in the world? He's going, I don't know if I want to go there. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Eric, do you have any more questions for King Henry? Let's just say that ego is overrunning the world at this moment. Oh, God, yeah. Um, Eric, do you have any questions? He's going, hmm, what should I ask? Okay, so he's saying, so... I don't know what's up with him, but he's very sexually. Yeah. Uh, so he's saying, you know, if you look at all your pictures, you you really get portrayed with this big penis. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so is it really that big? <laughs> oh, did, it, it's stuffing. A bunch of a lot of Kleenexes. Oh, poor, you're getting red. Uh oh. This is showing me something. I don't want to see it. Oh, Eric, stop it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting rid. Uh, he's going. Let's just say that. Uh, let's just say that the tutors were the start of propaganda. Oh, really? So was, <laughs> you were well hung. I was well hung. He said, "I will, I will, I will admit to that. It might have not been as big as they shown it, but I, I could not complain about the size." <laughs> and, and your women probably couldn't either. No, I don't think there was any complaint in that, he says. Is there any way that you, 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 there may be different aspects in which you feel misunderstood in history. Would you like to clear, are there any misconceptions that you want to clear up? I mean, I want you to have a voice here. This is your opportunity to, to right wrongs. He says, yes, I want to discuss um, a label that they stick on me. Um, they call me the Mad King. They call me crazy. Um, I want people to understand that in those days, um, I was extremely influenced by so many people. Um, I did not know all the answers myself. I was, in my book, now looking at it, I was not the greatest leader. I indulged myself more with fun than I did with leading the country. So I trusted and I had faith in the people around me. Um, I did not see the betrayal. I did not see um, the sense of ego that also came from their mm. perspective. Um, and so, yes, did I trust the wrong people? Yes, I did. Should I have trusted myself more? Yes, I should have. Um, did I become crazy? No, I became uh, very hurt. I became full of pain. Um, and I did have, um, you know, some mental issues that led to my, um, very unpredictable behavior at, at times. So, um, I would like people to see that I was just a human, yeah. uh, being influenced in a time where everybody wanted to gain power, where everybody wanted to be in my favor, um, and being hurt, uh, being injured, led me to becoming a very disgruntled, uh, obese, sick person. Mm -hmm. So I would like to uh, beg, he says, I would like to beg people to please see me as a troubled man. Yeah. I was not crazy, I was not a tyrant, um, I did I did a lot of bad things. I did a lot of things that I regret, but so did a, a lot of other leaders around that time. So I was not the only one. Um, just please try have compassion. You want people to have compassion for you. Yeah. Understanding how much suffering you went through explains so much of, of what you did and your decisions. Now, everybody keeps saying in history that you had gout. But I'm wondering if it was the type 2 diabetes and the diabetes ulcers and, and the circulation ulcers on your legs that were causing all the pain in your feet. And people just attributed that to gout, which is a high uric acid con uh, content in the blood that, and uric acid crystals precipitate in the joints. So well, he says, yeah, it was, it was a combination of, but also 
He said the treatments that I made that I would put on my ulcer um, had lead in it. So that also created lead poisoning um, in a lot of, it was basically my, my, it's amazing that I lived that long, he says. But they, um, so, so that's why they thought you had gout, but you really didn't have gout? It's no, you had pain in your lower extremities from other things. Basically, my body was slowly poisoned, okay. not only by the treatments, uh, by infection, mm. by diabetes, by my obesity, um, my, I was slowly killing myself um, mm. at a very slow rate, and it was extremely painful, um, and it was extremely um, debilitating. I, I could I could no longer be who I was. I loved sports. I loved parties. I loved mm. doing all of that, and that was taken away from me with my last fall, uh, where that horse fell on me, saying. As of that time, my life was over. I became, you know, the best thing they should have done was cut the legs off. <laughs> but in those days, they wouldn't do that because mm. then, um, you know, you were the king. Um, I know. So there was a lot of image around it. So um, no, you know, no king could lead with no legs. It just would, wouldn't be possible. So, um, you know, that's what they should have done. But um in those days, it was different, you know. It was just okay. slowly my body poisoning itself, and then adding, you know, the. He's Everything talking about you know, the the sanitary wasn't there either, you know. No. Let me <laughs> ask you one more quick question: What do you think about the current Queen Elizabeth? He's saying, from my perspective. Um, she is no longer the leader of the country. She's more of a, a memory of the leadership. Like a figurehead. Oh, she's a messenger. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So you, do you think that's okay? Do you think it's better to be run by parliament? I don't, I don't know. Just you, you tell me. Do you wish she was leading differently? He says, no, I actually think that it's better to have... Uh, a group of people deciding about the faith of the country than it is about one person. Okay, so how do you view the royals now in England? He just sees them as tradition. They're just part of history. And you're cool with that? You're cool with the way they are? Okay. He's, yeah, yes, because any time... Um, he says any time a country is run by one person... Um, it never seems to turn out the way that people want it to turn out. Because ego can ego take all greed. sorts of it always, yeah. always sneaks in. It always does. That's true. Well, the Royals do give People Magazine a lot of material, so that's good. They do, he says. You know, and they do have their good. You know, they oh, do yeah. a lot of provide, um, you know. Work, yeah. a lot of um, work for people, um, you know, uh, good causes and things like that. They do help people. You know, they're just, um, they're a symbol. They're a symbol of, you know, that... Um, of history, the monarchy. Yeah, history, yeah. it's a symbol of, of the representation of, of how the country started. And, you know, as long as they use that symbol for goodness, then it's always good. And that's what they are doing. They are um, trying to help people, um, but when it comes to running a country, what where we would like to see the world go to is really all about um, togetherness. It's yeah. about people coming together and making a decision together, compromising, coming to agreements, because it's better to have different perspectives on something in a respectful way than it is to one person, um, <laughs> and he says, just look at me, one person saying, hey, you're bad, you're not bad, yeah. uh, you know, supposed to dress this way. He says, you know, a lot of people don't know that, but I actually made a law on how people needed to dress according to their class, according to their status, and it's, it's a written law that I did, that's how... Crazy, I was. Well, I don't know. In America, we're having the problem of being so polarized. Left is so far left, right is so far right that there is no compromising. 
Yeah, it's all we need to learn to come together and work as a team. Um, the Republicans, in your case, Republicans and Democrats, they need to learn to work together and come to an agreement on certain things. And and right they're now, they're much, yeah, they're divided. They're too divided at this moment. So, um, but um, he's saying, you know, just just to everyone, he says, just keep in mind that change can only start with you you know don't put don't put your your don't put the responsibilities on, on others uh, try to start with yourself and then you'll see that your uh, view and your experience of life will spread uh, like a wildfire people will say wow yeah she's you know this way and that way and it, it does need to start with us and that's how it spreads so it's up to us to start within ourselves and to pass it on to the people that we love and to pass that view on that we're all uh, equally important and that we are all one. Um, okay. Well, Emma, that, Emma, real Emma, quick, do you have any questions for Henry? Because it's it's on the hour now, so we need to close up. And then I want you to share about yourself and I don't know. Yeah, I I have to look those shows and see exactly what all happened in this life. Um, but yeah, I don't have any questions at this moment. Well, would um, you like to share? Uh, about yourself, how people can get in touch with you, cool events coming up. We know there's one coming up in September. Yeah, there's one coming up in September. We're having a Channeling Eric event in Belgium. Um, you can find more information on the website, emmanuelmackintosh.com. Um, as of this moment, uh, I'm not taking any new <laughs> appointment requests. But I will start again in December um, because I'm a year booked in advance right now. And I can't look that far in the future, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's too hard. You're right. Exactly. Um, okay, awesome. December, guys. Start in December. You guys can uh, send me back some emails again uh, if you would like to have a reading. But all information can be found on my website. And I'll be coming over in one week to Texas. So hopefully I get to see some people there and get to meet you guys. So I'm super, super excited. A little nervous Me about too. the flight. Oh, but, no, it's going to be great. It's going to be like great. Like 20 hours. I'm going to be along the way for 20 hours. So it's a long way. But it's worth it. It's worth it. I get to come see you guys. I get to so. meet your mom, too. That's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. She's super excited, too. So it's going to be great. And Eric is Eric is super excited. He's going, so you're going to snoop around in my room? Oh, of course. <laughs> like, Lovely. <laughs> I want to see what you're all up to up there. King, um, King Henry, thank you so much for sharing the most intimate aspects of your life. I hope people have a better understanding of you now. He says, thank you for giving me a voice. Sir, and Eric, thank you. I love you. Emma, thank you. I love you. I'm going to call you right back because I want to ask you something. Uh, uh, okay. Ask you something. All right. Bye, Eric, everybody. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>